Welcome back. So last time we talked about using kinetic energy and how kinetic energy was conserved. We also briefly mentioned how with our conservation momentum problem where before I needed to have two of those velocities in order to solve it in most cases. Well, what we really needed was another equation and conservation of energy gives us that equation. So there's a special type of collision called an elastic collision. Elastic, as you might have supposed, means they bounce off of each other. But for the specific technical definition, an elastic collision is a collision that involves no other energy than kinetic energy. So that's the only thing that's going on. So our gravitational potential energy is zero. We're not putting energy into deformational energy. Everything is strictly with that kinetic energy. So because that's true, the robots can't stick together because in order to stick together, they've got to have some deformational energy coming into play. So that pretty dramatically simplifies what's going on. Now, in the real world, that never happens, right? We're always going to have some sort of, of energy change. So you may say, well, what's the point? Why would I ever want to do it this way? Well, the answer is, is that there are quite a few situations where the other types of energy are actually less than the kinetic energy. And so you have to go to four significant digits or whatever before you see them. Well, if you can't measure it with the equipment you have, as far as an engineer is concerned, it's not there. So this is a very good example of how we can combine all of the different tools that we're learning into one tool that will allow us to come to a problem, solution to the problem very easily. Now, I will warn you, this entire lecture is basically solving a single problem. There, the, the physics behind it is actually very easy. It's basically just a giant algebra problem. So the important thing here is that you're keeping up with every single step in solving these simultaneous equations. And we'll, we'll take you through all the steps that you need, but it's very easy to make a sign error, to make a division error. As long as you're being careful, you'll be fine. If not, well, sloppy engineers kill people. Let's get started. Okay, so now we've got basically the same type of problem that we've been working with up to this point. We've got two robots and they're gonna to bang together. The only real difference between these two is that in this case, the blue robot's not moving. So it's the, it still has an initial velocity, but that initial velocity is zero. And that's just gonna make our algebra a little bit easier. Same principle applies even if the initial velocity is not zero. So we're going to draw our little diagram here. We're gonna have our red robot and our blue robot. Now we need a coordinate system as always. And think about what's going to be the most obvious coordinate system. In previous problems, we said, okay, the total momentum was moving to the left, so maybe it would make sense to make that positive. In this case, the blue robot isn't moving at all, and the red robot is moving this way. So we know that the total momentum has to be to the right. So why don't we just make that the positive direction? Don't just automatically jump in and say, yeah, I'm going to make right always positive. You can actually end up making your job a whole lot harder if you do it that way. Okay, so now let's fill in the data we know. We know that MR is 1.5 kilograms. We know that VR, which is its initial velocity, now we know that it's positive 0.25 meters per second. And then over here, we have our blue robot that has a mass of 2.0 kilograms. And in this case, VVI is actually zero, it's starting from rest. And what we wanna know is what are the final velocities of both robots? So we want to know what is VRF, and we don't know what that is, but it's meters per second. And we want to know what is VBF. And again, we don't know what that is, but we know it's meters per second. All right, as we found before, you've got to have two equations because we've got two unknowns. So our only option was, well, okay, if they stuck together, well, then I got rid of one of my unknowns. Or if I gave you one of the velocities, then we got rid of, of the unknown. We'll make that a little more clearly with F. Or if we gave you the velocity, it got rid of the unknown. Now we, we're not going to use either one of those. We're going to say, okay, we need another equation. So let's take a look at our next page here. So flip over to the next page. So here on this next page, we already know one of our equations. We know it's conservation momentum. Anytime that I have some sort of collision, conservation momentum might give me something I can use. Now, as we saw with energy, if I have some deformational energy, or if I have energy being transferred into some other method, then my momentum might not actually be conserved, not even the total momentum. In this case though, we have defined kinetic energy in such a way that the only type of energy in the problem is kinetic. 
So there's no other type of exchange going on. So in that case, then we do actually know that my momentum of my system is going to be conserved. So we're going to write out the whole thing from our flipbook, filling in the symbols that we've defined above. And so that gives me, let's make that MR. And so that's MR BRF plus MBVBF. There we go. Now it's a good idea to write it down with all the symbols just as it is in your flipbook. That way you can be sure that you've got everything that you need. Now we know in this case that VBI is zero. And so that whole term is going to go away. But now I can say, yes, I actually thought about it and it actually is zero. If it turns out it's not zero and you end up getting a, a mistake some in your problem, you can go all the way back and say, oh wait, I said that was zero and it actually wasn't. All right, now there's a question here. If the only type of energy being exchanged is kinetic energy, is it possible for the masses of the robots to change? Think about that. Well, no, it can't, because remember, in order for the masses of the robots to change, either I've got to have something flying off or I've got to have some deformational energy. You know, something's got to happen in order for that kind of thing to occur. So therefore, it is not possible for the masses of the robots to change. So I'm OK saying MR here and MR there in this, those same places. But don't just automatically assume it, because it's not always going to be the case. All right, now microtask 2 says, in addition to conservation of momentum, we know three kinematics equations and conservation of energy. So we now have five tools that we can use anytime that we want to try to solve a problem. Let's go ahead and write them all down just to see if we can see which ones are going to help us get those final energy, those final velocities. So my first kinematics equation then might be VF equals VI plus AT. I might have VF squared equals VI squared plus 2A delta x, x minus, x final minus x initial. And I might have xf equals xi plus my initial velocity vi t plus 1 half at squared. And then I have conservation of energy, which we've just learned is going to be 1 half mv. Let's go ahead and write down both robots for this one. So we'll say vri squared plus 1 half, we'll make that an r, mbvbi squared is equal to 1 half mrvrf, not a vector, it's actually going to be squared, plus 1 half mbvbf squared. And in, in this case, again, we know that one of those is going to be zero because my initial velocity is zero. Okay, so the kinematics equations look pretty promising, frankly, right? That shows us something that we can use in order to get it out. And we absolutely could do this. I could find that final velocity for each one of these if I know the acceleration and I know the time. Okay, I'm going to have to figure out what my acceleration is. I'm going to have to figure out what my time is. I'm going to have to figure out the distance over which it occurs. I'm going to be adding a lot of symbols, but I'll have a lot of equations I can put into it. That's the long way. So let's see if we can find a shorter way. Well, we know we only need one more equation. So adding in conservation of energy gives me one more equation that doesn't add any new symbols. And that's kind of the framework we want to have. I want to find a tool that tells me, gives me an extra equation, but doesn't add any new symbols. So that's going to be what we're going to want to use for this one. Okay, so now we've got our, looking on the next page here, we've got our, our two equations. And I'm going to write them both up here just so that we can see them. So that's going to be mr vri, and that's a vector, is equal to mbvbf plus mrvrf. And remember, it doesn't matter what order I do these two in. It's the total momentum that's working. And you see that my initial one was zero. The other thing I know is that I have 1 half mrvri squared. And that's equal to, I'll go ahead and do the mb here as well, mbvbf, not a vector. It's going to be squared. squared plus one half m r v r f squared. Two equations, two unknowns. The physics is done. Relax. We've solved the problem at this point. The only thing left is to do some algebra. Well, the algebra in this case might seem a little bit hairy because we're solving simultaneous equations. You may or may not remember how to do that from high school. 
but we can't take one equation, solve it for something and get a number, and then put that number in the next equation. It won't work. Instead, what we've got to do is we've got to take one of these equations, solve it for one of the unknowns. Then we're going to take that and plug that expression, not number, but that expression into the second equation. That'll get rid of one of the unknowns, and now I'll have a more complicated expression that only has one unknown. Once I solve that, now I'll get a number. I can take that back into the previous equation and get the other value that I want. So it will all work out, but you have to be very careful with what you're doing here. So I, need, I can choose either one of these equations. I can either choose the conservation of momentum or the conservation of energy equation to solve for that expression that I'm gonna end up plugging in. Well, the conservation of momentum equation looks a lot simpler to me. So what do you say we do that? So let's do that in this space here. So I've got MR, VRI equals MB, VBF plus MRVRF. And now I have to decide what variable I want to solve this for. Well, it seems to me that the easy one to solve for is going to be that V is going to be, it has to be either VBF or VRF. Doesn't really matter which one. So well, let's solve it for VRF. Let's solve it for this one right here. So that means I need to bring this over. So I get MR VRI minus MV VBF must equal MR VRF. And now I'm going to divide through again so that I'm going to divide each term here. Remember, we never, never, never divide an entire equation. Even if we may end up recombining things you know, by adding fractions, a lot of times we're going to see that if we get out of that habit, things are going to help us out. Like, for example, that fraction right there cancels. That fraction cancels. And so what I'm left with then is just VI, VRI, minus this ratio, MB over MR, VBF. And that's going to be equal to VRF, which is my final. And we've seen this kind of equation before. If you remember from previous problems, what we did was we found we had an initial velocity. And so there was a, a parenthesis here in the, this this ratio was being multiplied by that had our initial velocity. So this expression should look somewhat familiar to you. Okay, so anytime we're going to another page like we're doing right here, the, you always want to copy down exactly what you had before because it's very easy to make a sign mistake at this point when you're copying things over. So I'm going back and I'm looking at the previous page and we have, we found this expression here. We found that VRI, which is a vector, minus MB over MR, VB, VBF, and that was equal to VRF, like that. So we go back, we double check it one more time, everything looks good. It's very easy to forget this minus over here, for example. All right, so now we're going to look at our next equation, and we're going to start filling that in. So we started with 1 half MR VR squared is VR, VR I squared is equal to one half MB VBF squared plus one half MR VRF squared. So before we start getting really messy, let's start, let's simplify this as much as we possibly can. Well, I can multiply this whole equation by two, or equivalently, I can divide every term by one half. And now these go away. And remember my symbology. If I don't have any number up here, if I have it going to zero, well, then that variable was actually zero. In this case, it just means something canceled out so that I'm keeping up with it. All right, so one operation at a time. That gives me MR VRI squared is equal to MB VBF squared plus MR VRF squared. Now, before we solved, if we look up here, we already solved for VRF. So that means that I need to solve this equation for the other unknown, because I'm going to plug this in to get rid of all the VRFs, all the, all the VRFs here. So let's solve this for VBF. So I get MR VRI squared minus this term over here, MR VRF squared, and that's equal to MB VBF squared. All right, I'm going to go ahead and factor out this MR here. And so I get MR times VRI squared minus VRF squared, and that's equal to MBVBF squared. 
And then finally, I'm going to divide each term by MB. Well, there's only one term on this side. Those cancel, and I'll be left with MR MB times VRI squared minus VRF squared is equal to VB. We'll do capital for now. VB. Well, we can do better than that. VBF squared. There we go. Now, I could go ahead and take the square root. I don't like carrying around a lot of square roots. I'll just do it at the end when I'm finally done. Also, we're going to see that a lot of terms are going to cancel out here. So what I do now is I take this expression and I substitute in everywhere that I have a VRF in the previous expression. So to start off with, don't do any math in your head. Just enter it in as a parenthesis. So I'm going to start up here and I've got MR, MB, and that's going to be VRI squared minus, and then the parenthesis, VRI, my R there, VRI minus MB, MR, B, B, F, and close our big parenthesis here, and we know that that's equal to VBF squared. Now I'm going to start simplifying. This term here, by the way, is squared. Don't forget that. That's going to be a very easy thing to forget. And if you look right here, you see that that term is squared. So we mustn't forget that. So we're going to expand out this square in this parenthesis before we do anything else. So that's MB. This is going to be VRI squared minus, keep those parentheses. Don't carry through that negative sign yet. You're going to make a mistake. So this is a, a binomial. So this is going to be VRI squared minus 2. VRI M B M R B B F plus M B over M R squared B B F squared. And then our big parenthesis here, and that is going to equal our V B F squared. Just like that. All right, so a whole lot going on with this. Let's try to simplify as much as we can then. All right, so I'm going to keep my MR and MB over here for now. And you see that I have, if I were to go through and carry this through, I'm going to have a minus, a plus, and a minus. So you see I've carried that, in, that through. And that allows me to get rid of these external parentheses. So I've got VRI squared minus VRI squared. Those two go away. That's very nice. Let's go ahead and write down what we have left then. So I've got two... V R I M B M R V B F. We're going to simplify that in just a minute. Minus M B M R squared V B F squared. Close that print. V B F squared. Okay. All right. We're finally getting there. So let's see what we can do to rearrange this a little bit. See if we can combine some of these because I'm going to need to get all of my MB, I'm going to need to get all of my VBF terms together. Notice that this is MB over MR, and this one's MR over MB. So let's multiply through by that. And so I get two, and I'll take this, this is MB over MR, just so you can see why these cancel out, and I get an MR over MB, like that. And then I have a VRI and a VBF. And then subtract that. I'm going to have the same thing again. I'm going to have MR, MB. But now I'm going to have an MB over MR squared. And that's really hard to read. But hopefully we can see what we're doing here. Let's go to eraser and try that one again. So that's an, this one down here is going to be my B. And this one up here, that's an R. See if that makes that a little bit easier to follow there. Okay. So all I've done is I've multiplied this, this ratio through, and that gives me VBF squared. Okay, so now you can see that this cancels out entirely, and this cancels out one of these. If this is squared, that means there's two of them. So I'm going to have this left. So now I've got two VRI VBF minus, oops, we forgot our VBF squared here, didn't we? Let's put that back in there. Minus MB 
over MR VBF squared equals VBF squared. Now we have to get all of our VBF terms together. And so we're going to have to put that everything back, move this back over to the other side. I'm going to write it down here and then we're going to copy it onto the next screen so that you can be working on along with your book. So I'm going to, if I put all of this on one side, then I'm going to have two BRI VBF minus, and then I'm going to bring this over to the side. So that's going to be one plus MB over MR VBF squared is equal to zero. All right, let's start out by carefully copying over from the previous page that expression that we found for our final answer there. We got two VRI VBF minus one plus MB over MR times VBF squared is equal to zero. Go back, double check, and make sure that that's what we have on the previous slide, because if we get it wrong here, we're going to get the wrong answer at the end. All right, now, this equation actually has two solutions, right? If I pull my VBF here, I'm going to have VBF times some things. Well, that means that one possible solution is that VBF equals zero, that the final velocity of blue is equal to its initial velocity. It's still zero. So that's the case where the red robot missed. See if that makes sense, right? Let me go ahead and pull that out for you so that you can see that. So we get VBF is going to be 2VRI minus parenthesis 1 plus MB over MR and times VBF and then the close for the big parenthesis equals zero. So you see that either one of these terms, either the VBF has to equal zero or this big term in the parenthesis has to equal zero. Well, one valid solution is VBF equals zero meters per second. However, VBI was equal to zero meters per second. So that's the case where the robot simply missed. All right, that's not the interesting case. So that's not the one that we're going to worry about, right? Because we know that the robot actually did hit it. And so this is where you have to think about where physical reality and math come in. We were told they collided. So we know that situation, that solution there cannot be the correct one. And so we're left with 2VRI minus 1 plus MB over MR VBF equals 0. And that's going to be pretty straightforward to solve for our VBF. So let's take that and let's put it back in here. And so I'm just going to move this term to the other side. So I get 2VRI is equal to 1 plus MB over MR times VBF. F. Okay. Then to get the VBF by itself, I'm just going to divide both sides here. So I get 2 VRI over 1 plus MB over MR is equal to VBF. And yes, that's my final answer, and I could actually plug in numbers and get it from here, and you'd be fine. However, we could take that number, yes, and then we could plug it into our original expression for VRF, and we'd get another number. But as we're going to see for the next lecture, we can actually get something very useful out of this if we go ahead and find an expression for VRF that only depends upon the initial values. So let's do that little bit of extra math here. So I need to get a common denominator for here. So I'm going to go 2VRI over MR over MR plus MB over MR. And that's going to be again equal to VBF. Okay. So now I can add these two fractions and I get VBI, VRI, sorry, over MR plus MB over MR is equal to VBF. Oops, VBF. Now, I think we can do better than that. Okay, so now I can flip this bottom fraction and multiply. And so I get 2MR VRI over MR plus MB is equal to VBF. Okay. Now that looks like something I could easily plug into my original expression for VRF. So let's remind ourselves what that was. That was VRI minus an MB over MR. 
VBF is equal to VRF. Go back and look through your notes, page back through those until you see that that's actually true. I'm going to take this expression down here then and I'm going to plug that back in for VBF. And you'll see that all I have left then is going to be my VRI because the rest are going to be numbers that I know. So there's my VRI minus MB over MR times 2, I'm going to write this as 2MR over MR plus MB times VBF. Oh, I'm sorry, that is VBF. Whoops. Let's get that out of there. Times VRI is equal to VRF. So now I've got everything in terms of that original thing, but let's simplify it a little bit more. Here you should be able to see my MRs cancel. And so I'm going to have VRI minus 2MB over MR plus MB times VRI is equal to VRF. Now I can factor out my VRI, VRI times 1 minus 2MB over MR plus MB is equal to VRF. So you see that if I don't have a blue robot at all, if the mass of the blue robot is zero, then this fraction term here goes away and I'll just be left with VRF equals VRI. So that makes sense. The greater, we also see that the greater the mass of MB, the smaller VRF is gonna be. And if it gets large enough, VRF, or VRF is actually gonna be negative. It's gonna bounce backwards. So this allows us to interpret physically what's going on. And in the next lecture, we're actually gonna use these two expressions to get something new. So I'm gonna have this expression, and I'm gonna have this expression for this. And that may seem like we've done a lot of math in this case, and we have, we've done a lot of algebra, no kidding. But once we have these, we can write these equations down in our flip book. So for the case where I have an elastic collision, a perfectly elastic collision means absolutely nothing else but kinetic energy is involved, and then they collide, I now can get the final velocities using these two new equations, and I can apply them. And so we're going to see that we can use, we can speed up our work without having to do all this algebra again ever, simply by keeping up with our results that we put here. We're going to put those in our flip books so that we have them. Okay, well, you want to go ahead and get a number for these. So for VBF, it's going to be 2MR over the sum. And you see that the velocity of the blue robot, and this is going to be times VRI, since it started out from rest, it depends upon two things. It depends upon how heavy that red robot is and how fast it's going. It depends on its momentum. So the higher the momentum it's got, the faster blue robot is going to have when it comes over here. So we can plug that in and we get 2 times 1.5 kilograms divided by 1.5 plus 2.0 kilograms. Both of those are kilograms. Times our VRI, we said, was positive 0.25 meters per second. And let's see, when I did that for BBF, I got positive 0.214 meters per second. Check my work, see if it works out. Okay, then for this one, for the second, the red robot final, we wanted VRI times 1 minus 2MB over MR plus MB. And that was equal to VRF. So I can do that here. That's going to be positive 0 0.25 meters per second times 1 minus 2 times the blue robot now is controlling how fast this is going. So it's interesting that the red robot controls the blue robot and the blue robot controls the red robot for its final result. And then that's going to give me 1.5 kilograms plus 2.0 kilograms. And when I did this one, I got that it wasn't that this actually this fraction was larger than one and just barely though and so I got negative 0 0.357 0 0.0357 meters per second for my final so there's my two final velocities and as I was saying you do not want to go through all this algebra every single time that you solve a problem like this However, if so long as we're careful with our assumptions, we can make a flipbook page for this. So our flipbook page might be something like 
a perfectly elastic collision, so nothing but kinetic energy involved, assuming that one robot is initially stationary. As long as one robot is stationary, I can apply these two. I need to be careful which one's red and which one's blue. Maybe you just want to call them one and two so that you don't get confused. But as long as one robot starts out stationary, I can now go straight to these two equations. Okay, let's see if we can understand physically what's going on. So we got that the velocity of the blue robot after collision was positive. It's now a vector. Z zero, let's make that a little clearer. 0 0.214 meters per second. And we got that the velocity of the red robot after the collision was negative 0 0.0357 meters per second. So what happened to the red robot after collision? Well, originally it was positive, right? It was going into the, to the right in a positive direction. Now it's negative. So that means it bounced backwards. Now what happened to the blue robot? Well, originally it was stationary, but now it's moving in the positive direction. And we define that positive direction to be to the right. So let's see if that makes sense for us. If these are our robots, and here we started out like this, and initially this was the red robot was moving this way, the blue robot was stationary. After the collision, and I'm gonna put my coordinate system down here. After the collision, the blue robot was going this way, and the red robot was going very slowly this way. So what happened is this was sitting, the blue robot was sitting still, they bounced, and now they're both moving in the opposite direction. So we can interpret physically what's going on here. When you're making your flipbook page then, let's use this space for this, we might say elastic collision with stationary robot, or robot at rest, your choice. As long as one of them's at rest, we're good, because if they're both at rest, they're not going to hit each other. So we assume that blue robot, using my symbols here, is stationary. If it turns out the red one is, that's fine. If that doesn't affect anything, you just need to remember to go through and change all your symbol names. Okay? And so if that's the case, then now I can take those two equations that we derived on the previous page. And I'm not going to take the time to write them out, but you'll have one that will give you VBF equals a bunch of stuff, and one that gives you VRF equals a bunch of stuff. And then be sure and define your symbols for each one of those. Okay, so that was a lot of work, but it wasn't really physics work. It was really just algebra work. And so while the physics was fairly straightforward, it's just two pretty simple equations when it comes down to it. Really, we spent 25 minutes doing all of this algebra to finally get down to two reasonably simple equations that we could also interpret to see what's going on physically. So the lesson here is don't plug in numbers too early. Don't plug in numbers until you have what you want equal to symbols. Sure, you might could answer that one problem just by plugging in those numbers, but you don't want to have to go through all of that algebra every single time you need to solve a situation. Instead, now you have two very specific equations that apply in this, equa in this situation, a perfectly elastic collision where they bounce off of each other, and now you can go straight to that. Your job now is to recognize, oh, wait, there's nothing but kinetic energy being exchanged here. That's the definition of a perfectly elastic collision. I've already solved that. I'm going to pull that out of my book and just write down what those equations are and go straight to the answer. Save you a lot of time. We'll see you next time.